Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the national international uh, picture here on this whole issue about creating 21st century skills, which we keep talking about even though we're now more than a decade into the 21st century. We may still be talking about this in California 50 years from now. We hope not. Um, but this question of what would it take to be internationally comparable, because that's really been the discourse, is how do we become internationally competitive? We look at the scores on PISA, and we look at the way that other countries are doing, and so on, and that's been a motivating part of the discourse for education reform. Uh, and uh, when it comes to this question of measuring college and career readiness, which is, again, sort of the north star for our conversations and efforts around this at this point, um, we need to think about what that really means. And I would argue that uh, genuine readiness for college and 21st century careers uh, requires, as much as anything else, the ability to find, evaluate, synthesize, and use knowledge in new contexts to frame and solve non-routine problems and to produce new products. Now, let me give you an example of why this kind of understanding, which requires transferable knowledge uh, that uh, students can uh, apply uh, with their own guidance about where their knowledge fits and how to acquire new knowledge, why that's so important. Now, those of you here who are here from Silicon Valley know that those of us at Stanford don't usually like to quote people at Cal Berkeley. Um, <laughs> but every once in a while they do something that is, you know, sufficiently worthy of note that <laughs> it has to be done. Cal is in the house, I know. Uh, <laughs> There are two professors over at Berkeley who have been studying the growth of knowledge in the world. And they've been kind of tracking this for a number of years. And among one of their recent studies, they found that between the years 1999 and 2003, four years, there was more new knowledge created in the world than in the entire history of the world preceding. At that time, technology knowledge was doubling every two years. Now it's doubling in less than a year. Uh, so the idea that we've had about curriculum in education, you know, we take the body of knowledge you'll need to have, uh, we assemble it, we divide it into the 12 years of schooling, we dole it out in little portions, you know, you get tested on whether you mastered those facts that were relevant to your grade, and then you're baked and done, is really becoming increasingly irrelevant for the 21st century when the knowledge our kids are going to have to um, use is in many cases not invented yet, um, and they're going to have to access it using tools that we haven't yet developed, um, solving problems that we haven't yet conceptualized. So we really have to develop thinking capacities, problem solving, design, communication skills. Of course, there are bodies of knowledge. Those bodies of knowledge, uh, which include concepts and facts that need to be understood, have to be organized in a way that the central ideas and the modes of inquiry that allow you to continue to access and locate and connect ideas are well displayed. So the expectations are for learning are changing. This slide, if you can read the bottom of it, this is an eye test. This is the eye test part of the morning. Uh, says, Chris Wardlaw, mathematics in Hong Kong, China, improving on being first in PISA. Uh, this is a slide I ripped off. It's called R&D, rip off and disseminate. Um, <laughs> from the deputy minister in Hong Kong uh, as he was talking about why they needed to reform their assessment system. And of course, you can see the competitiveness in this idea of improving on being first in PISA. And this uh, aspect of their launch of their reform has led them, in fact, in Hong Kong to replace their old examination system with a system of school-based assessments, which are primarily project-based, inquiry-oriented investigations. Uh, and the expectations for learning that he talked about, which you all have seen in list after list, if you're in education, you've seen this many, many times, that we need uh, the ability, students have the ability to communicate, adapt to change, work in teams, solve problems, analyze, conceptualize, reflect on and improve their own performance, not wait for somebody else to tell them whether they've met a standard or need to revise. Manage themselves, create, innovate, criticize, learn, new things at all times across specialist borders. So this is what we're expecting schools to ratchet up and do. We've all talked about it many, many times. 
And these are the kinds of assessments that we've been using to measure the skills our kids acquire. This happens to be from Nate, eighth and twelfth grade science test. What two gases make up most of the Earth's atmosphere? I could have you do a little text uh, response to the ABCD. <laughs> but I know in this audience there are probably a lot of right answers. Uh, an open-ended item on NAEP uh, was the following. Is a hamburger an example of stored energy? Explain why or why not? A one-word one answer with a one-sentence explanation. Now we look back at this list of expectations. We say, which of these expectations were measured on that assessment item? Take a look and see if you can call out some. Hmm? Somebody says none. Number, number four. So there's a little communication there. Maybe a little of that. As one person said, you have to manage yourself to get through the test. So that's, that's part of it. But most of the things we tell schools that we want them to develop are not being evaluated on the assessments that we're asking them to be accountable for. Um, and so this is you know, why there's so much uh, effort going on. This um, slide, which is a little challenging to read, but I'll just parse it for you, comes from an international project uh, that Cisco, in, uh, Intel, and Microsoft have been supporting uh, with a set of countries around the world to develop new assessments of collaboration and problem solving and ICT literacy. Uh, and the point here is that as you go towards these kinds of uh, skills that I just described, you need to move from on-demand tests with selected response <laughs> items way up in that left-hand corner uh, down towards more student-designed uh, kinds of tasks. And you need to move from bounded tasks, where the student responds to a specific prompt, uh, over towards more open-ended challenges. And you can array the kinds of skills, critical thinking, problem solving, decision making, and so on, uh, along that kind of continuum. And assessments uh, in this conception, which as I said, a number of countries are working on around the world, uh, really is trying to push assessment increasingly towards that lower right-hand quadrant. Um, now let's talk about the Common Core Standards, which California has adopted and many other states have. And think about what they're asking kids to be able to do. Uh, the Common Core Standards in math have statements like this, that students should be able to understand, describe, explain, justify, prove, construct, compare, investigate, build, interpret. Uh, so these are very active verbs uh, that suggest uh, kinds of cognitive processes uh, that would allow students to apply their learning uh, to a range of real world problems. These are expressed in the mathematical practices in the Common Core Standards, and they are being um, considered in the new assessments that Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium, which California is a member of, and PARC, which about 20 um, states are members of, are uh, building into the new assessments. Um, this is a, a CST math item that um, uh, is measuring one of the California standards, uh, and it uh, you know shows a, a solution to an equation, and then asks the student to name the property of real numbers that John used for step two. In fact, in the content specifications for the Math Common Core standards, uh, there's a statement that when one is looking at a bit student's abilities to work with equations. Uh, the items will not ask for students to produce a vocabulary term or a label for what it is they are trying to do, but actually to be able to not only use the operations and manage the uh, analyses, but to explain and justify what they did and apply it to a real world problem. So you can see the kind of shift in the uh, assessment expectations uh, of those items. Here's an item from Queensland, Australia, if we think about international comparability, um, which gets at the kind of uh, skills that are embedded in the Common Core Standards. So in the stackable chairs task, which kids do um, at the middle school level, uh, eight, year eight or nine, uh, the kids are asked to figure out how to store a set of stackable chairs. And their task involves modeling, one of the Common Core Standards, uh, they have to develop mathematical models for the dimensions of the stack. They have to use those to find 
a variety of aspects of the mathematics of the task. Um, they have to think about the practicalities of storing the chairs. Uh, and they work in a team and record everything they do uh, through an investigative process, and uh, again, one of the other mathematical practices, in a research journal, which uh, works them through an investigative process and is part of the assessment that is scored and evaluated. And then at the end, they have to explain uh, and evaluate their solution uh, by writing a report on uh, what their uh, analysis was, what their solution was, what their conclusion is, and how they think they would actually improve the investigation or the strategies that they use. This kind of task you'll see commonly in a number of countries, um, Australia, the UK, in their uh, what they call controlled assessments that are uh, done in the classroom, and many others. Uh, and those really directly uh, address the kinds of competencies that are in the Common Core Standards. Let's look at the, C the Common Core Standards in English Language Arts. Um, they ask students, for example, to produce clear and coherent writing uh, with appropriate development organization and style, uh, to develop and strengthen writing through planning, revising, editing, rewriting, or trying a new approach, uh, and draw evidence from literary or informational text to support analysis, reflection, or research. You can begin to imagine how that might shape different approaches to assessment um, of English language arts. Uh, and uh, you can see how in the United Kingdom, in, in um, England, uh, the tasks that are scored as part of the GCSE, the high school English uh, examination, this comprises 60% of the points for the examination, uh, address those kinds of skills. Kids need to uh, do responses uh, to three texts that um, are defined in certain kinds of tasks. They have to do two imaginative writing responses. They have to do a set of speaking and listening tasks. Speaking and listening are part of the Common Core standards in English language arts. And they have to do a written exam that asks them to respond to passages um, uh, that provide information and ideas. Um, and those uh, exams, as I said, are 60% of the score in almost every one of the subject areas. Here's an item from the CST, English language arts uh, test in California currently. Um, and it asks, which of the following statements from the passage supports the author's conclusion that carrier pigeons sometimes had a dangerous job? Um, it does refer to a passage, um, but um, what you find uh, to guide the right answer is that on his last mission, though wounded, he carried a message, uh, so it must have been a dangerous job. So it becomes a you know, close reading um, kind of item. Uh, and, and there you have the answer. Uh, here's an example of how in Alberta, Canada, the kind of reading that is uh, described in the English Language Arts Common Core Standards is assessed. Uh, there's an article from Scientific American on autism, which gives a lot of information about autism, how uh, it's been linked to the drug thalidomide that was used in the 1950s and 60s. Um, it describes how birth defects over the uh, time of the age of the embryo may be related to the, the time of using um, thalidomide. It talks about the genetic um, aberrations that can occur. Uh, and this is the reading question. Again, the Common Core Standards ask for reading in the context of science, history, technology, and other subjects. Uh, then ask students to write about two areas of the brain that can be affected in an individual with autism, the relationship between those areas uh, of the brain and the symptoms, et cetera. So you can see the difference in the kinds of assessment expectations uh, in countries that have been organizing their curriculum and assessment around these kinds of standards have been developing. Uh, the Common Core Standards also ask students to do uh, short and sustained research projects uh, and to present information findings and supporting evidence in ways such that listeners can follow the line of reasoning, um, alternative or opposing perspectives are addressed. Uh, and organization, development, substance, and style are appropriate. So uh, the, ki the students have to be thinking not only about how am I going to understand, find, investigate, and organize information, how am I going to present it in a way that it actually communicates uh, to other people. Uh, and if you look at a task like this, again, from England in the uh, ICT task, 
um, you can see all of those skills reflected. Students have to, they're, they're supposed to be uh, organizing for a uh, promotions group, uh, an ICT solution to allow them to um, make, keep track of staffing costs, overhead costs, and, um, and revenues. Uh, and they have to work with a team, record and display their finding, come up with a solution, and evaluate whether their solution works, and then present it in a way that others can understand it. Project work in Singapore, which is like the project work that you see in the International Baccalaureate Program, is another example of a way to tap these skills. Students have to do an interdisciplinary assessment. It's dis developed by the Singapore Examinations Board, but the tasks allow students to choose an area within a topic that they're interested in. They must do collaborative learning through group work, which is part of the evaluation. They must do individual and group oral presentations. Uh, they do a written report and they keep a group project file in which you can track what was going on in the investigation. So generally what we're seeing around the world is initiatives that are um, asking uh, schools to focus on standards and expectations for these 21st century skills. Um, the tasks, as you can see, require very proactive work on the part of students. They're not sitting there uh, identifying or guessing at one answer out of five. They are planning and managing work. They are uh, engaged in research analysis, production, and self-assessment, evaluating their own work. Um, the, uh, many countries are expanding performance tasks, school-based assessments, um, and arming teachers with more capacity um, to do their own classroom assessment. And in um, all of these contexts, teachers are involved in designing, re reviewing, scoring, uh, and evaluating the assessments. I'm not sure what the goal stuff is about over there. But these are the folks from Alberta, Canada, and I think when they finish the exam, they go play a round of golf. <laughs> it's, it's math. <laughs> and the goal, as the Singapore education minister put it, is less dependence on rote learning, repetitive tests, and one-size-fits-all type of instruction, more dependence on engaged learning, discovery through experiences, differentiated teaching, learning of lifelong skills, and building of character. So the key issues we have to wrestle with for teaching and assessing 21st century skills are how to develop higher order thinking and problem solving um, and what kind of teaching and assessment strategies will work for us in doing that. How we may begin to value assessment of, for, and as learning uh, as it is described in many countries and what the role of formative as well as summative assessment may be in that process how our systems can integrate both curriculum embedded or classroom assessments with on-demand sit-down tests, what kind of curriculum expectations, instruction, assessment, and teacher development need to be created and aligned and integrated with one another in a teaching and learning system, and how we can engage teachers in assessments so that they can develop their understanding, their professional practice, and their capacity to support student learning. And now David Plank is going to give us a prognosis uh, for next steps in California. Thank you. A few days.